Well, this session is about customization and extension of Web App Builder. But uh, and since it's the last one, everybody's here, I'll cover a little bit more about uh, where we're coming from, where we're heading to, why are we doing a Web App Builder, and uh, how many people are working on Web App Builder? Well, okay. How many of you are writing code, widgets, themes? Okay. You did <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah. Okay, so I'll cover a little bit, uh, uh, be before we start, I'll cover a little bit the, the real, uh, the larger picture why we're doing this, right? And uh, so, because you're doing a web app builder, you already know a lot of them. But this is not just a, a builder. We we're trying to do something more. Now let's start with, uh, and a lot of you are um, already in the business of creating apps and doing software development and solve business problems, right? How do you create an app? Usually, you start with an idea, a good idea or a bad idea. Well, sometimes bad idea. So you want to create an app. And when you start, well, you start with the small. You have a features and functions collect from your customers, your boss, and that's the bad part. And uh, you, you put together, and you create a little app. And then there's more features and uh, functions and requirements coming in. You start jamming everything into your application. You've done this, right? I'm do I've done this. And, but you don't stop there. And you you know, build all those connections, relationships, dependence, all into your big, you know, giant apps. And it's never stop. Right? There's more features and functions, the more required requirements you know, from all over the places. It's pretty happy, actually. People ask you to do something. But just, you know, over time, you become somebody like this, <laughs> or like me. <laughs> and, but that's never enough. And you get a whole bunch of a mini-me or mini-you to do the job. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of life of developers. And the result is you, have, you spend a lot of times and a lot of your company's money is in doing this. But in the end, usually this is what you get, right? <laughs> well, that's not exactly what you want. Let's do something more. Right? People will say, this is life. Get over with. But life is not supposed to like this. Life should be better. <laughs> and so that's, that's why we make change. The reason being, the app has changed. You know, we have to change before we have to. Who said that? I forgot. But we need to make that change. And this is really where we're coming from. And to do that, and there are a few things we want to share with you. The app is no longer a fixed asset. Usually, actually, in the company, an application is like a fixed asset. Because you spend a lot of money. You have a project. You have a budget and build apps. And you hold on to it, grow to it, and at some point, you're really tired of it. That's how app works. And, but it's no longer like that. And uh, apps it is disposable. And before, we never threw away apps because we spent so much time and, and, and the money to it. But nowadays, app just you create a dump it and you create a new one. So it's supposed to be like that, easy. And uh, app is something you use to understand the users, your customers, not just something just get job done and done with it. Also, apps become a data item. It's not just an application. It's so unique. It's so different from the rest of your information management in your system. App just like data item. And it's its own life cycle. You need to manage the app, just like data, right? You have a, you know, ideas, you design, you're, you're programming or configure it. That's the better part. Deploy, and you track your apps. And you analyze it, and you feedback that into your your you know, developers, your configurators, and you continue doing that. And the life cycle should be very short because it's dis you know, disposable. And this is really what we're heading to. But we just started. And we start with the, a builder, help you simply build app easily. The concept is quite simple. I'm, I'm sure everybody already familiar with that. You know, we're going to have a user interface to help you build your application, and uh, there are a whole bunch of uh, widgets. That's the functionality. That's the building blocks, and developers are still working on that. And you build widgets, or you share widgets, and get the widgets from somewhere else, the communities, or you know, business partners. And uh, you build themes, we talked about that. And to make your app stand out, unique, have your branding. 
And the behind scene, the little player stem cell. This is whole app builder and, and underneath the, the high level conceptual architecture. And uh, then when you try to build something, basically you pull out the feature and the function you need it. And uh, you apply the theme, you then bundle ev everything together, and you have a, a and then you have app. And this has changed the way we develop application because the, before it, there's always the developer in the middle and they create coding, programming, and in the end, uh, nobody's happy. So now you can create that very quickly, and if you don't like it, you dump it. Or after you've done your job, you dispose this app and you create a new one. And that's how the app creation changed. And because the process is so easy and simple, and we've seen a very good result. Uh, oh, um, there's two items for developers, because this is customization and extension uh, sessions. And, and as a developer, or so whoever interested in, in customizing uh, Web App Builder, there's two terms called widget and themes. You know, you've heard the widgets a lot here and there, but the widgets in, in our world, and it's something, uh, it's execu executable. It's not exactly executable, it's execution at a runtime, right? And you configure the widget into your application. You don't do cut and paste. That's programming. And uh, the widget itself is self-sufficient. That means you can bundle and package them together, and you can share with others. And other people can configure it into their application. There's no IDE and you know, text editor or cut and paste involved. The self can be distributed, distributed to others. And uh, obviously, in the widget world, you need a container to hold the widget, to run it, right? And uh, it has a programming model uh, for the container environment. That's why, that's how you develop the widgets later on, Julie gonna share with you. And the theme actually almost is exactly the same as widget. It's something applied at runtime and you don't do cut and paste and coding, you don't involve ID or develop uh, environment and uh, you package them, you can share it. So that's widget and themes. In this web app builder world, really, as a developer, that's where you're going to work at. And the whole design uh, principle we have, really, just keep it simple. And uh, the simplicity really paid off, not only for us, I'm sure for, for you as well. And uh, the result actually is pretty happy. And since we released uh, the web app builder one and a half years ago, Something no, like that, two, right? Two, 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 two. Yeah, and uh, we've seen there, there are more than like 12,000 apps created, and um, and there's, there's com just compared to how app was built before, this is really a really huge number. It's quite significant. So that's really what we want people to do. So that's how uh, we're a builder, and how we're coming from and to, to build the web app builder. Now to start with the session, and uh, Julie gonna do a little bit of introduction. We just started. Uh, uh, Julie was the, is the product manager of JavaScript API, and yeah. And uh, uh, she was also the web app builder project, ma uh, pro product manager, and a few other things, I couldn't <laughs> lose track, yeah. And uh, my name is Mark Sejan. I'm, I'm director of a Beijing R&D Center. We do a lot of uh, cool stuff. So uh, Julie, we're gonna start a little bit of introduction, and we start to uh, go over how you, how do you uh, start create your very own widget, and I show you how to create a theme, and later on we do a little bit of what's new community. Actually, I'll cover another session is uh, uh, the roadmap. So I'm just talking about where we're coming from. I share with you where we're heading to. Then, if I have time, we do a little bit of Q and A, or we can hang out because this uh, this last uh, session of the day. So, having said that, I turn it over to Julie. Okay. So, I'm I'm sure some of you guys have seen this slide before, and that's because this continues to be our strategy for really enabling you for to build web applications for your organization. Um, you know, really our end goal is to just try and help you be successful. So successful building great apps with a great interface. Um, and we really want to help your productivity when you're doing that. 
Um, so we try to accomplish that in a few different ways. One of those ways is building the configurable apps, so um, templates, so you can create your web map and then publish it out using an application. Um, we create builders like Web App Builder. Uh, now we have the native version, App Studio. Um, and then we also you know, produce a lot of samples and tools that you can interact with the samples, like the sandbox. And then also widgets. So if you're going to build a completely um, custom application using the JavaScript API, we have a suite of widgets to help you out. So you, you know, common tools, you can just use those rather than starting from scratch. And actually, the, the Web App Builder leverages a lot of the JavaScript API widgets that it's really embedded um, inside Web App Builder. Uh, so you'll kind of see some similarities there. So the developer edition, um, many, so there's, a, I guess, a couple different workflows for working with Web App Builder. The first workflow is the fully embedded version in online and portal. So basically, um, you create your web map, and then you share it out with, by using, uh, creating an application. You can choose to use a template or use a builder. And that's where the embedded Web App Builder comes into play. So you can create your application, and it's fully hosted um, in online or portal. You have the option of downloading it. But essentially, that's, that encapsulates the embedded Web App Builder. The developer edition has almost an identical experience as the embedded version, only you're installing it on your own machine. Um, so you actually have full control over all of the applications that are created from it. Um, you can put them out on your own web server, and you can play with all the code, create your own custom widgets, custom themes. So if you're doing any of that customization, like you know, extensibility that Mox and I, Moxie and I are covering today, you will be using the developer edition. And that's just downloaded from, from the website. So the Web Builder Builder's really just uh, taking advantage of modern technology, we're really trying to you know, leverage all of the HTML5, no plugin, pure JavaScript. Um, they, the team's really made an effort to keep it as simple as possible, so it's not using a ton of libraries. It's just pure uh, Dojo and JavaScript. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, been built with uh, the fact with, in mind that everybody's really wanting to create web apps to be able to uh, use them from any device. So uh, the application needs to be responsive. You need to be able to not just have it fit on a mobile screen. It needs to be usable. It needs to have a great layout. And um, a lot of thoughts going, has gone into that, as, as you'll see in a moment. So what I'd like to do is just go through uh, creating your own widget, um, <clears throat> kind of thinking about the anatomy of a widget. If you look at uh, any of our samples in the JavaScript API, You'll notice that there's some main sections. So it, there's going to be some styling, some CSS. That's, that kind of translate when you're talking about the widget world. It's going to have my widget or whatever the name of your widget .css. So you're going to be, basically pull out those, that piece into a CSS file. Then you have the script. So that's your JavaScript. So that goes into widget.js. And then you actually have the HTML, the, the UI that you're building um, that we actually call a template that you're going to pull out that markup from the sample if you're using a sample. And that's going to be in its own file. So every widget has this basic anatomy. And you can kind of think of, you know, if you're just getting started building widgets, um, I feel like a really good way, place to start is look at the JavaScript API samples, look at these different pieces, and you can start pulling them out into the widget pieces um, and kind of understand how, how you can extend Web App Builder using that, that sample code. <clears throat> so every widget extends from base widget. So you'll see here um, that it's, it's referencing base widget. And what base widget does is it gives you all the things you need to do to tie into Web App Builder. So getting access to the configuration, getting access to the map, um, everything that makes a widget a widget is basically inheriting from the base widget. Um, so widgets have different events. So there's the digit lifecycle events, so basically after it's been created. And then it also has widget events, so basically after it's been positioned in the, in the application, after it's been completely done created, the startup, that's where you can do a lot of your logic um, with, within the widget code. Then you have other events like um, open, like when a widget's been opened, expanded, maximized. Um, you might want to know when that's happening, because um, if you're adding a layer to the map, for example, uh, when the widget's open. 
maybe when, and it, because maybe they need to use that layer while they're using your widget. Well, when, then when they close your widget, do you need that layer to remain on the map? Maybe you want to make it um, invisible. So um, you can basically make decisions um, in your code based on when the user is doing different things with your widget, whether you need to you know, hide things, clean things up. Um, you know. So you can basically listen for those events and, and react accordingly. So this is a kind of a very, very high level overview of what base widget gives you. So basically you can get the name, the icon, some information about the application itself, all of the configuration data. I'll illustrate that in a moment. Um, the map object. So we actually made this slide originally when we only had the 2D version. So we'll see how this is slightly different when you're working on the 3D side. Um, the widget state, so what's the current state? Is it open, is it closed? Again, events like uh, sign in or open. And then uh, the team's actually done a good amount of work on widget to widget communication. So a lot of times, you know, when you're building a widget, it doesn't, you don't want to build a widget that has like a million tabs. You know, a lot of times your end user might need to do multiple steps to be able to complete an action. Well, a great way to implement that might be like one widget is one complete workflow, and then basically it can talk to another widget that starts another part of the step, rather than kind of cluttering a, you know, a single widget with a lot of tabs. Um, so you're basically leveraging that widget to widget communication helps you communicate um, between states of, of multiple widgets. So this is all the, the kind of the hooks that base widget gives you. And then your job, of course, is just implementing the UI um, deciding what you want to be configurable about your, your widget, styling it. Um, if you want to localize it for different languages, you can choose either to just do it in English, uh, do it in 30 languages, or do it in two, whatever, whatever you decide to do. And then, of course, the actual business logic uh, that goes inside the widget. So I'm going to uh, look at a little more, just another level of detail into the anatomy um, of the widget. And actually, I think a better way to do that is just starting to look at what you get when you install Web App Builder. So essentially, the, the download of Web App Builder Developer Edition is just a zip file. So you unzip that file, you run startup, and then bam, you're up and running. It's running inside its own node server. And these are the files that you get. Essentially, there's the builder folder um, and under the client, and then there's the server. Essentially, you're going to be staying within the app. So the STEM app and the STEM app 3D, this is where most of your work's going to, going to happen. So I'm going to open the 2D version, which is STEM app, and look at a couple things. Uh, the first thing worth looking at is the config JSON. So if you think about what Builder really is, it's just a great experience um, for users to interact with to actually update this config file and any of the widget files. So basically it goes and as you pick settings and you configure themes, it's going to update this config file and any of the, the files that are associated with the theme and the widgets. So this is what's getting updated. Uh, a few of the sections worth mentioning is the widgets that are on screen. So this gets updated as you're adding widgets. Those are the ones that are actually on top of the map. Um, <clears throat> Then you have all of the widgets that are displayed at the, the, in the menu, and so you get the widget pool. So this one's actually adding all of the widgets. Um, you can even have special layouts specific for mobile. So again, um, if you're designing an application that you want to look good and work well for any screen size, you might want to have a different, maybe you don't need a million widgets if you're just going to be using a mobile device. So you can actually make some of those decisions. Um, <clears throat> so to get started developing your first widget, what I like to do is just um, kind of simplify the config. I don't need to bring all of these widgets in during my development experience. I just want to um, maybe bring over a couple. And so um, there's a folder that you can use called sample configs. And you can just copy paste that config file in there. and. Um, define exactly what you want to include in your simplified config. So in my case, I've just put my own little Julie's widget in there, and that's the only thing that's going to be loaded is that, that widget. So uh, if I look at launching the application um, <clears throat> just with that one widget, oh, sorry, that's one other thing I wanted to mention. The, um, the map, 
So you can actually just pre-configure what web map it's going to load when you launch it. I'm basically doing all this stuff because when I'm in development mode or test mode, I don't want to go through the whole builder experience and work with configuration every time I'm testing it. So I'm going to be you know, writing some code, and then I want to see it. Writing some code, I want to see it. And by kind of simplifying your config and launching the app in the way I'm going to show you, it kind of like streamlines your whole development process. So here I'm just hard coding it to this web map ID. Um, <clears throat> it's all about cats and dogs. And uh, this is what I get. So I go straight to the 2D app. Here it just has my single widget. just says I'm a pretty sweet widget. And um, <clears throat> it, it loads the, the cats and dogs uh, web map here. The URL is worth noting as well. So this is in the documentation for how you can actually bypass the builder and go straight to the, um, the actual app. Here, this is the, the web app viewer. And then I'm saying which config I want to use. So maybe I have a, a development uh, or a test or development configuration that I want to use for one widget, and I have a different config for a you know, different setup. You can basically have any number of config files, and you just reference it as a query parameter, and you can just load the app that way. It'll, it'll pick which widgets you've, you've defined. All righty, so uh, moving right along, we, here's the, the widget folder. So for the 2D application, these are all the widgets. You have all of the code for all of the widgets. You can take one of these and modify it. Um, you have all of the source code. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a really good learning tool if you want to kind of start playing around with code. Um, picking one of these widgets and changing something is, is a good, one of the good ways to start out. In the sample widgets folder, so this is installed with the developer edition. You have a, a couple different samples here. You have a widget communication one that kind of illustrates some of the concepts I was mentioning. Um, the custom widget template, this is a cool one because if you go into the documentation under sample code, am I not connected to the internet? Oh, sorry, hold on a second. Um, it's actually going to walk you through like a step-by-step -step tutorial of creating a new widget, and it basically uses that one as the starting point. So it's a good, it's it's good to know. Um, am I where I think I am? Okay, it's good to know um, where what that starting point is. So that's that custom template you can copy. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, back in here. Um, <clears throat> the demo widget is a good one. That's the one I'm going to use for my demonstration. The demo is just the most simple widget that has a few little things configured. It has localization, it has like the CSS setup, so you can use that one as a starting point as well. Then there's also a jQuery example. All right, so what's inside a widget? So the first thing we'll look at is this is the actual HTML. So this is the thing that's going to display in the widget body. Right now, again, I just have that little text, I'm a pretty sweet widget, and that's all it's doing. In the widget.js file, so here, this is where the actual business logic's going. Um, I'm extending base widget. It's bringing in all those, those helper functions and map and configuration. Um, and here's all of my handlers. So basically, after the, the digit's been created, it's going to call post create, and I could choose to do something there or I can do it after startup. So startup is actually a web app builder widget event, um, and that's a good one to do things like uh, if you're making any decisions about the UI, um, this is a good place where you know for sure it's been positioned and it's ready to go. It's, um, <clears throat> you have access to the map, so this is the, this map will give you access to the map. And basically, once you have a reference to the map, the world's your oyster. You can do anything to that map. You can add layers. You can change rendering. You can basically do anything you want um, if you have programming abilities <laughs> and you have re reference to the map. And then, of course, here's the open and close, like different stateful events. So what I'm going to do is, um, bit by bit, add a little bit more to this widget. And then we'll go into a little bit more um, interesting scenario where I'm going to take a uh, JavaScript API sample and then make it a widget. So for this very basic widget, um, again, back to the HTML, I'm going to add another uh, two more things inside of it. The first thing is 
rather than hard code the text, I'm actually going to pull the text from the config file. So I have a reference to the config because of base widget. And here's my config. And I simply just have an um, item in here call, or a property called config text. So in my HTML, it's going to read in that. And this div will, will then say, um, I'm configurable. The other thing I'm going to do is um, localize the string. So the localization actually just follows the, the pattern uh, that Dojo uses for localization. We have an M NLS folder. And any languages that I want to support, I make a folder for it with that, that language um, shortened string. And here's the, the English version. String, this is the default strings.js. So all of the strings I plan to localize, I'm going to put in this file. Then any languages I want to support, I'm going to put a one and actually um, put a strings.js file under that language. So here I'm going to go up to the Spanish version and see my strings.js. And here I've translated, well, not directly. I speak Spanish. Anima, anima, we say that like when we're really excited at a soccer game. And um, essentially, when I'm running the browser under a Spanish locale, this string will be used rather than the English version. So if I think if I remembered to save this guy and then reload my application, um, the config file always gets cached. So what you can do is keep the developer tools open, set it to never cache it, and hopefully um, you won't have any caching problems and um, not seeing your updates. So here I see my strings. So I'm um, a pretty sweet widget. I'm configurable. This came from the config file. It says I speak Spanish, but I'm actually running in the English locale. So if I open Firefox, that I actually already have it set up as Spanish, and I copy this URL. Uh, we should see it in Spanish. Let's see. This is the test. Let's see. Woohoo! Okay, it's Spanish. <laughs> um, all right, so the next thing that I'm going to want to do is maybe I can play around with the style. So I'm going to use a selector to pick out my widget. And then I can just set up what you know, styling I want to do. So I thought cornflower blue sounded like a pretty, like a pretty color. Um, and then change the font to extra large. So the first child in my widget is going to have that styling. So if I go back and I re um, refresh this guy, now I should see the first thing, the first element in my widget be styled with that styling. I'm on the public public uh, internet. Sorry for the slowness. So I'm a pretty sweet widget, and that looks pretty cornflower blue to me. All right, so that's just the really quick whirlwind of the little pieces of a widget. Um, now I want to show you something a little more interesting. So this is the uh, home page for the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. And I really encourage you, if you're just getting started with Web App Builder, this is a great place to start because the Web App Builder part is the easy part. We're making a widget, and the actual glue making a widget is really easy. The part that you need to understand is the stuff you're putting inside, which uses the JavaScript API. So these are some really good samples for learning how to work with the API. Um, this is actually using the, the 4.0 um, samples. Oh, this is the 4.0 site, so you might be thinking, um, well, we're working, this is the 2D version, and maybe I didn't actually say it. So the 2D version of the, in the developer edition is using the 3x API. Oops, I just clicked on something. It's using the 3x API. Um, the 3D version is using the 4.0 API. And that's just because right now, that for 2D to have a fully featured app, we're still using 3x because we actually haven't reached functional parity with 4x yet. Um, I'll say a little few words about that in, in a moment. Um, but essentially, if you're creating a widget that you want to be used in, in the 3D version, you're going to use 4.0. So I'm, that's the, what I'm going to actually demo, is actually creating a new widget using a JavaScript API sample for the 3D version of Web App Builder. 
So uh, I'm going to pick out a sample, and the one I want to show you is drag and drop portal items. What this application does is basically it, it uses this new concept uh, that's uh, a layer item. And what you can do basically is drag and drop the layer item onto the map. Now the beauty of layer items is it's very similar to web maps. So web maps, we like that because you can do all of your, your styling, set up your pop-ups -up, pop and author all of that in a nice authoring environment online or portal rather than having to you know, program all of that on your own you know, in, in the code. Um, so what's different about a web map and a layer item is that layer items actually, you, know, you can actually pick and choose the layers you want. It's not going to load the full web map. It just actually um, includes just the styling and the pop-up of an individual layer. So I can be displaying my web map and then just add a layer on top of it, and it will bring across any pop-ups that have been set up for that layer. Let's see if this one. I don't like the accidental death story, but um, so it, it has a pop-up configured with it. So what I'm going to do is take this sample and then integrate it into uh, the widget. So let's go here and look at a, the 3D version. Um, <clears throat> everything that I explained with working with widget is the same for 3D. So if I look under the stem app 3D, this is where I put my 3D widget. And um, I have something here called add layers. And as you can see, it has all those same files that I was describing before in, in the 2D case. So if I open widget.js, I'm going to compare it with the layer item sample that I just I copied that from the, the SDK. So this on your left you have widget.js, and on the right you have the SDK sample. So a couple of things that I'd like to point out that's different in 3D is um, in the 4O API, we've really one of the key architectural changes is that you have a map, and that's really where it's your information model, it's containing your data and your layers. And then you have the view. And the view is responsible for rendering that map in either 2D or 3D. Yeah, for 2D, we call it a map view. For 3D, we call it a scene view. So if you remember, I was talking about the map in the, in the previous uh, widget. Now, instead of working directly with the map, a lot of times I'll be working with the view instead if I'm going to be um, working with the rendering. So in some cases, you'll see that uh, with, like, if I search for, I think we have a scene. Oopsie. Didn't mean to type it there. Um, scene view. So here you have it, you see that it's using scene view. Um, that's because I'm actually um, working with that 3D scene as opposed to the 2D, and it's this using this new architecture. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out is in samples, you are of course you're in charge of creating the map um, and working with the view. So here it's actually creating a web map, and then it's creating a map view. You don't have to do any of that when you work with widgets, because that's all already part of the web app builder. So rather than creating that, I'm just going to reference it and do whatever, do what I, you know, what I need to it. So I'm just going to line up the code so you can kind of compare what that looks like. Um, so here it's creating the web map on the right, and then if I line these two up, you can see that in both cases, um, I'm, I'm basically taking the layer items and then I'm creating these portal items from it. Um, in the sample case, they actually have to do a little bit of um, waiting because it's all asynchronous creating this view. I have to wait till it's created, then I can do things with it to add the portal items. Um, but in our case, we already know it's for sure created um, because we're working within <coughs> Web App Builder. So I simply can just say, you know, load those, those portal items and later on, we actually add them to the map. And that's really, the, you know, the rest of the code is pretty much the same. So I've just created, I've just actually pulled out that JavaScript. The other pieces we have is the HTML. So basically, I just have that uh, layers div, and that's where I'm going to be adding, let's go back to the sample, that's where I'm going to be adding these guys into the widget. Um, <clears throat> Also have the styling. Again, this is the, the styling that I pulled out from the sample. Um, if I, oh wait, I have it here. So if you look at the sample, all the styling is all embedded in that one um, file, but in the widget, you're going to pull it out like this. And essentially, that's really all you need to know um, for configuring it. So if I just uh, show you how it works, 
One thing to note is that I'm hard coding those layer items, but in a minute I'll show you how you can actually make that configurable um, so your users can decide what layer items are they're going to be pulling in. So let's go and see how that works. Um, the first thing to note is, as I was explaining before, I don't want to have to create a new app every time I'm testing out you know, my development changes. So you can just run the 3D app. Um, it does run inside Builder in this case. Um, I think in a later release it'll, it'll be more like this one where you're completely outside the Builder. But for right now you have to, you have to work in this environment. But you don't have to create you know, new sample test apps. You can just run it directly. So I'm going to go under Widget. And I can see here that it has my Add Layers widget. And the only thing I had to do for that to, to work there is basically um, add my folder of widget inside the widgets folder. It's basically always monitoring the widgets folder, and it will discover it and be able to add it to the builder. So <clears throat> I add that guy. And you can see that it does have this config with those, those two items, but it's actually not even going to use it. I'm just going to say cancel. Oopsie, I didn't even add it. Let's, let me add that real quick. Add it, OK. And then here, I have my, my two um, items. So if I test it on drag and drop that guy, um, now I see that, that just that layer. And again, it's pulling across those pop-ups that I showed earlier. Um, this, these are actually, these aren't coming from the config as you saw before. It, they were um, just hard coded. But now what I'm going to do is actually pull it from the config rather than hard coding it. So I'm going to comment that out, go to this one, uncomment that. And so now, and let me, we don't need to look at this guy anymore. Um, so it's getting this.config that gets it from the base widget, the selected items, and then that's what it's going to use as opposed to these hard coded ones. So I'm going to save that, and then just refresh this. And then um, it'll actually look the same, but it is pulling it from the config. And you'll kind of see that in a minute um, when we do a little bit more work in the builder. So going back here, I guess this isn't really going to prove anything at the moment. Um, but I could actually change this right here. And um, it would, it would uh, do you guys want me to prove it? Do you want me to change the item ID? You believe me? Okay. Um, and then it would it will add that to it, that's what will be displayed here. All right. So next step, um, let me actually cover a few more slides because I'm going to do something else. Uh, I, we just included this slide because it's a good way to see what's uh, mandatory. So these are the the folders, um, the styling images, NLS. So these actually aren't mandatory. Um, you add these just if you want to style it, have some special styling. Um, the image, actually, you want to have an icon, so that's what they click on when they um, are looking at your widget. NLS, again, for localization. And then setting, I'll go, th go, go through in a moment. So these are just the high-level steps that I, that I kind of explained. So you download it. Um, you're going to connect to your portal. And that's because, if you, if you noticed, um, in Builder, it's almost like you're completely embedded in an online or portal. It's, if you had gone to the step after you've created the app, you'd see that it's, it really, you can't identify that it's different from um, ArcGIS Online or Portal. Um, that's because it's totally tied into your organization. You're going to sign in with your you know, named user account. It's going to connect to all of your utility service, your print service, geometry service. It's going to, anything you've configured with your organization, it's going to pick that up and it will automatically configure that in the builder. Um, you'll access all your web maps, all your web scenes. Um, it's almost like you're completely running it within that because you're so um, connected, only it is on premise. So the, the nice thing that you can do for your end users is, if you remember what I was showing in the demo with this guy, um, you know, that's, it's not that nice to make your users edit JSON. I mean, they can do it. And especially in this sample, it's really simple. But you know, you could have a pretty complex um, you know, set of configuration. Imagine like the chart widget. I don't know if you guys have played around with that. Can you imagine that just being direct JSON? It'd be you know, pretty complex. So what you can do is actually build a whole settings UI with your custom widget um, and have your users configure it that way rather than make them edit your JSON. 
So I actually have an example where I've, where I've set that up, and I'll, and I'll show that to you. So here, if I add another widget, I have this one, so layer demo. If I add that, so now this is actually the settings UI that I've created. Well, when I say I, I mean uh, someone on Moxie's team helped me. Um, I click on that, and now it's letting me browse in my portal. I can search for stuff, um, maybe like organic farms in the area. Um, <clears throat> and have that be selected. And then, or maybe I'll select, like I can search for something like airport, I think I have, at that guy. And um, now you guys, uh, now it would actually add it. Where is my, sorry. Um, the one I just, it's in mobile mode for some reason. Um, this is the one that I just configured that had the settings. So now you can see that it really is reading it from the config, and I used that nice UI to, um, to actually configure what I want in my widget. So I've got to zoom in. You'll see it load these international airports. And it's pulling in the, the, the pop-up that I've configured. So how does settings work? If you go into the widget folder, it's an optional thing, again. Um, there's a folder called setting, and you have to make sure you keep all the naming right in there. They, they really, um, you know, tried to keep that consistency so you can easily share widgets within the community and you know exactly what to expect, what the file name's gonna be. Um, so that remains the same for setting. And all setting is, is it's just JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, you know, NLS, that's for the localization. You can localize your setting. It's just like building another little app, only that's gonna run inside the builder. Um, an important thing to note is the builder was built with a 3x API. So that means that even if you're building a widget for a 3D, um, you're still creating the settings UI with 3x. So just uh, a note that you should be aware of. Um, and that's about it. So looking at the setting, here it's just a very simple table, and then the JavaScript, um, that's where it's gonna go out and get your portal items. Um, and that's what's enabling the setting. The manifest file is um, an important piece because it communicates to the builder what your widget do has or doesn't have. Um, it gives you credit, so this, this widget was created by the R&D Center in Beijing. Um, it says if it supports 2D or 3D, what the platform is. Um, you know, if you have any rights or description you want to put in. So basically, if you're going to create a widget and you want to share it with other people, it'd be nice, you know, if you fill out this information and, and give yourself credit. And then in the properties file, this is where, or the properties object, that's where you're specifying what your widget does or what it has. So I'm saying I have a settings file, um, and, you know, so it's going to look for it. If you go to the documentation um, under widget development, there is a topic on the manifest, um, and it ex explains what all these things are and what the default value is. Some of them aren't required, um, but you know what? Some, I've actually, even during demos, gotten one little thing wrong that I didn't realize and that it was supposed to be the manifest file, and it may not show up the way you expect in the builder. So just um, definitely reference this particular help topic when you're putting the manifest file together. And, all right, now Moxie's gonna create a theme. What, what number, three? Okay, let's talk about the theme. I really want to encourage you actually creating more themes, because we really like the uh, themes really make your application stand out. And because uh, theme is you, and uh, you're special, right? Every organization, every individual, every company, whatever, you're, you got something special about you. And uh, to make your application stand out in the web app builder environment to, is to create your own theme. Make your theme beautiful, unique, stand out. I really want everybody doing a more on a theme area. It's quite simple actually doing a theme. And conceptualize, and a theme really is just a user interface. And there are a few logic uh, blocks on the screen. And in the right hand side, usually and you have some area and you can interact with, right? Have your widgets contained 
even though it doesn't have to be in an area. That's why you can come up your own theme. And application usually have a header right, to contain your widgets, functions, or give some shortcuts. And on the screen, you might need some um, elements there so user can right away to interact with do something, usually search or zoom in, zoom out, that kind of thing. And of course, map always there you know, in terms of our application. So altogether, that's really your theme, and plus your branding, your logo, your colors. And talking about particular uh, application, and in our case, we have this uh, header theme, right? It's almost mimic the concept we have. And uh, we have the header controller, and the header controller, you can, you can add widgets to it. This is a pretty common uh, you know, user interface, usually. Then from there, you can click the widgets to something. And there's area you can put your title of your application, or put your logo to it, and uh, to represent your own organization. And there's a shortcut. Usually you have a search button, a search field in there, so you can quickly interact with the search the item, search the data, and you load up. And when you define a theme, there's a place on the screen, usually it's the placeholder. Because when you design a theme, you're not actually design application. You want to give the theme to somebody else, so you have a placeholder. You can imagine that you want someone to put something in there at the shortcut. So you can pre-design where you want people to put something on the screen. And uh, of course, there's a panel. And a panel is also kind of integral part of the theme. Panel is something that you can load widgets into it. But you can actually predefine the panel, how it looks like, you know, what the behaviors you want the panel to be. Do you want people to drag the run or, or enlarge? All that defined with the, the panel. Now, the whole idea of the theme, if you talk about design, is that we want to take a lot of the task and the development task or design task away from widget developers. The widget developers, we want to actually focus on to write the piece of functionality to solve your problem. And you don't need to worry about too much of a styling or colors or how actually the widget is going to be running on application. We give the job to theme developers. And Currently, we develop the things like we take the job from you as well. So that's kind of separation of works, really put developers focused on solving your business problem, and you have other people to doing some other things. So that's the concept idea behind it. And uh, when you start developing a theme, uh, lots of things really, really similar to what Julie just mentioned, how you develop the widget. And, uh, in a design concept, we have the thing called the, you know, design by convention, or develop by convention, or defaulting. And uh, the actual implementation the idea is that uh, there's a lot of default area, right? Default folder names, default folder structures, default file names. As long as you understand that, you follow that, a lot of things will be a lot easier. You don't need to worry about something broken because you did something differently. So that's another level of simplicity we want to put into it to make your job a little easier when you develop themes and uh, uh, widgets. And uh, if you look at the folder structure, I'm not going to go into detail of them because Julie already talked about it. It's the same. And uh, let's look at the code to create our own widget. OK, so I have a little cheat sheet here. Actually, before that, I'll explain a little bit further. Let me go back here. So when you start to create your own thing, so where you start? This is how I started, right? You, you get a piece of paper or whatever, your tablet, say, I want to create my own theme. I want the theme looks like this. That's its own layout. And push a button here. And uh, I want my scene in our case. And it has uh, a panel underneath the screen to hold my widgets. Well. I don't, I'm not sure if that works or not, but just the way I like it. And I pick my own color. In the summer, I, I want to pick this brownish you know, color. It's, a, it's warm and um, exciting. So you get those ideas on the paper. Then you move on to the next stage. You start implement. Let's see how we do that. Uh, 
everything the same. Actually, Julie already talked about the manifest file. The manifest file really is the file to describe everything about this widget, in this case, about this theme. And this is your like a canvas, so to speak. And just imagine later on we put GUI on top of it, but it's not there yet. And this is your canvas. You're starting to translate your idea and from the you know, napkins to this area. And you give a name. And uh, you imagine, I want to put a panel you know, on the bottom of the screen. I call it double panel, or however name you, you, put, uh, you can name it. And, uh, and I want to give some style. And from here, it's only just abstraction. You can just write in this. And a default style here, oh, I want to change the color. I want it. Right? I just, you can change that. That's the brownish, uh, orangish color. And, uh, and keep another color as an option. Uh, you can lay out. Well, in that case, we don't have layout. Um, this really contains everything you, you, from the image, you know, the, the picture to this kind of a, a JSON structure. And of course, and as a, a best practice, you really want to give a version number, you can track it. Right? In this case, if you're not confident enough, you can pull up a zero behind it. Right. OK. <laughs> but in case you still have a lot of ego, you can put your name in it. OK. So you have that. And let's see uh, um, what it looks like. So you, you actually start to develop a theme. Let's put it in, uh, uh, in the web app builder, see what it looks like. To do that, let's start my uh, session. Oh, before I start, actually, I need to do something else. So let's just copy. As a developer, and uh, uh, you can do a lot of this uh, shortcut. You can just copy the whole theme. Right now, just one file into your uh, web app builder. And there's a lot of folder structure. I'm sure uh, if you're a developer, you're already familiar with. And under the theme area, you just copy it over. Already have something? Yeah. Let's get there. OK. So you have a theme there. And uh, then we go back to that. <laughs> let's create. Uh, let's refresh this. Right. Number seven. So let's create a new app. Oh, come on. Okay, so you have some theme, a theme showing up here. Right now, really nothing. It's a, it, 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 if you click it, you, you will hang. So at least you know actually it's showing up. So this is your first step. So from here, you can imagine what should go next. You want some icon here, right? You want to show the visual stuff there before you actually get into uh, the components or other area. So that's how you want to move to the next stage of the theme creation. Okay, from here, let's see the next step. Um, in the next step, you create a lot of visual thing. And uh, first of all, you modify, you, don't, you already have this manifest file. Uh, everything you see in there is good. And uh, you add your style into it, because you already find two style. This is two style really is the button going to show up, but later on I'm going to show you. But you, each style, you're going to have your own uh, style sheet. In this case, I will fill it up. So you want a background to the orangish uh, color. And there's some others you can, there's documentation actually to document those tabs. But this is the area where you translate your, your color or style into this file. If you're developers, probably you're already familiar with the style sheet. And uh, then you have the layout. The layout concept in a, a theme, uh, it's similar. It's, uh, if you look at the, this is a, uh, the configuration file. This is the config file actually Julie just talked about for, for a widget. 
And this configuration file uh, for the app, this configuration file, the only thing different is an, uh, there's some position, that's the placeholder on the screen. Everything else really just similar to your config application. So the way, once you have uh, the visual design, the way you're creating a theme, it's almost like identical to create a new application. You just wrap around it and as a theme. So let's see we have this. We're gonna um, drop this into our web app builder and see what we have. So I'm gonna copy the whole thing and go uh, back to the same folder. Can I replace that? And to make it clear, I'm just to start restart it. Okay. okay, so let's create another one. So sooner you're gonna help me track the number. There's nine. <laughs> okay. So we have this one, the icon showing up here. Uh, if we click to it, still nothing happened. And, but the visual-wise, there's something showing up, right? We can see there's the two colors. This is my, you know, color. That's different, the greenish color. Um, there's only one layout. It doesn't do much, but you can, over time, you can start saying this, you know, the, the visual part of the showing up on the screen. Now, once you're satisfied with this, you, you can dive into a little bit more details in terms of theme development. There's a thing called a development because they involve actually developer side of it. So the next step, you can see from here, and we dealt with uh, uh, styles. We have uh, many space files. And you can see there's a two area. One is widget, one is a panel. Now let's talk about the panel first. Now panel is, I mentioned earlier, is really your widget frame or widget holder. It's the one the widget gonna run inside the panel. So, as I said, the, the panel is more or less my user interface. It's not your core function to develop your application. That's why the panel has been taken out into the theme. So the theme developers will deal with the, the panel development. Uh, for instance, this is a very simple panel. Now, Compared to panel development and the widget development, they're identical. If you look at here, they're really using the base, base widget panel. And then there's a, I'm not going into the detail of them because really that's the widget development. And there's some life cycle and stuff you can, you can uh, deal with, do something about it. Only thing differently is panel, you define the UI and interacting uh, with the panel. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want a panel to be draggable, you want a panel to automatically attach to somewhere or enlarge or make the art shaped panel, you, you, you will be doing from here. And uh, hopefully you can give the developer and the widget developer something in cooler than a regular panel. So assume here you develop a panel, put out here, and uh, there's another area, we put the widget here. Now why we have the widget here? Now, usually, and as I mentioned earlier, from the user interface uh, aspect of it, you're gonna have a, some common user interface related things to hold you on the menu or your shortcuts. And in our case, we have something called a head controller. The head controller really is the one you can add widget you know, item to it, then you have drop down list or have something else. So why we have that widget here, right? Even though it's widget, because we want the whole theme can be distributed, packaged together, and give to somebody else, and somebody else can just load it and run. So this is by design, we want the whole theme is self-sufficient, a package that you can hand over to others. And uh, the others can be other developers or configurators, they should be worry-free, they just load the theme and it works. So this is a two areas involved coding. One is the panel, one is the widget. I'm not going into the detail of it. So you have the whole structure, right, at the theme. Now you need to just give away and see uh, how it works. So we're gonna just do that. I'll call be the whole thing.
okay into my web app builder environment here actually and replace it uh, let's just make sure I'll restart all right so I'm gonna create another one 10 10 <laughs> you pay, pay attention good all right so so I reached the 10 <laughs> okay if we click that boom we can show it up it's almost like a what I designed right we have to color a different color and we pre-configured some widget onto this panel um, we have a more widgets configured to it and it all works uh, we can do something about it so in this case we already developed a new theme and uh, you can package this and uh, give to others and it looks pretty easy huh now let's go back to our slides so in a short of time actually this is quite involved you actually if you developers you create this panel but now we just show you actually from those steps right involve some design you really get the designer actually design this and then development you package from this picture actually translate that into a theme so let's get into the next uh, session is that uh, what's new we just released uh, the new uh, web app builder embed version and the very soon we're gonna have the new uh, developer edition released so in this uh, release we add a whole bunch of new widgets and eight of them I still remember and uh, like add dates and the rich attributes share widgets and a few others now showing up here um, we add more uh, theme related now you can actually do the color picker rather than just follow my color actually you can use your own color a lot of people ask for it so and also 3d is a big deal this time everybody likes to talk about 3d and uh, because the JavaScript uh, API 4.0 released obviously we want to uh, do something about it so we developed the 3d aspect of the web app builder um, with that um, we add a, a set of 3d widget and right now we have a, a bunch of them you can use in the, when you create a 3D application. As Julie talked about earlier, when you create a 3D application, behind the scene actually we're using the 4.0 SDK. When you create a regular 2D application, we're using 3X. But this is going to be transparent to you. Once you get the developer edition, everything is built into it, including actually when you download application, try to deploy to some, something else, we're going to handle which SDK we're going to package together. So we're continuing growing this uh, 3D widget set. And uh, over time, once 3x, 4x merged, we're going to have one uh, um, just SDK behind the web app builder. Also, we add something new. And we're starting to deal with how do you visualize your multidimensional time-driven data. So we add some uh, 3D visualization into the web app builder. This is to uh, this is also 3D, but it's different. The traditional 3D deal with the 3D object, right? You put something real into on your screen, building trees and the light points. But also, we're trying to do something to visualize your data. Your data could be abstract data, your transaction, your scientific result. And we, we have the sets of uh, technology built and actually help you visualize in a 3D uh, environment. In a case, in a way, help you understand the data better and we're going to do more about this in a, a later release let's talk about community julie okay um signing oh, in. You can go over here. Uh, oh it's oh, okay i got it yeah. so okay so web app builder has a very impressive community um <clears throat> okay take a quick picture <laughs> <laughs> we're going to share the slides um, and I just want to go through a couple places that are worth noting. So first of all, um, on GeoNet, there is a um, uh, Web App Builder place. So you can just search for it. 
um, or go into communities. And in here, you can look for web, web app builder, and it'll come up with a place and groups. Um, <clears throat> so this is the one that um, has like the all of our developers are interacting with. So if you have a question, um, you want to know when something's supported, you're running into an issue, you want to just interact. This is a very they're very 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 responsive. So you can interact in this community. This is a is, is Robert here in this session? Oh, Still okay. Here, yeah. Our celebrity um, widget developer <laughs> created this community where um, you can share your widget or your theme um, and, and see that all here. And then I know we do have uh, Rebecca here. Um, she does a, a great job kind of collecting a bunch of different resources out there. Um, I posted a video on JavaScript, I think, recently, and Rebecca found it within like a few hours and she posted it on GeoNet. So anyway, this is another great group. Uh, she, Rebecca's over here. Thank you, Rebecca. Huh? It's updated? Oh, it says when it's updated. Oh, this is it. Oh, oh my gosh. That's <laughs> impressive. We, we already have this session already in here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, OK, well, thank you. Um, and then uh, some other things is, of course, the developer site for Web App Builder. Um, there's a lot of great resources in here, so check out the guide. has pretty much all the topics you could think of about developing with Web App Builder, whether it's theme development, 3D specific development, which, by the way, is very thin because it's pretty much the same as you know, w working with Web App Builder as 2D. Um, <clears throat> so it, it actually isn't, isn't that detailed. It doesn't have to be. Um, a whole thing on widget development. Um, so of course, as I was mentioning, as you get into actually creating your widget, you're going to need to use the JavaScript API. So now we have a SDK for both the 4.0 API and the 3.17 API, um, depending on which, which, uh, whether you're building for 2D or 3D for Web App Builder. So this is 4.0. You can go to 3.17. And um, what I would mentioned in the beginning is I really highly recommend you go to the migrating from 3x. So if you've built a widget with 3x and you want to kind of understand what you know what sort of classes are available or what functionality is available in 4, this whole this whole book is dedicated to that and and kind of learning the new programming patterns working with 4. So you can even um, you can drill down. You can use it like a high level of what are those programming patterns. You can see um, you know what's at a high level available in 3x versus 4. And then all the way down to a very detailed level of, you know, is it done at you know, even the property level? And if we've, sorry, if we've implemented something differently, we'll note it. So um, for like map image, oops, uh, dynamic layer. So in this case, we've actually renamed the dynamic map service layer. Now it's map image layer, and you can actually go and see how it's been implemented. Anyway, so it's, it's a, a resource you definitely need to know about when you're building um, things for, for Web App Builder. Finally, there's training, of course. Uh, three different options for you to look at for Web App Builder. And I think, oh, do you have more roadmap? Oh, sorry, Moxie has more roadmap. Oh. Number four, three? Yeah. Okay, what, you know, at the beginning I talked about uh, how we get here, right? Then we talk now, I'll share a little bit uh, what's in the future. Um, now, I showed this picture before, and uh, I said app has changed, and uh, there's a lot to do with uh, the app lifecycle. We want to do more about the apps, not just create app, use it, done with it. There are a lot of things we can do and help you, in, you know, get more value to the app you created. And uh, the goal for that is quite simple. And it's follow this life cycle. We're gonna starting building some other capabilities. And the path is very simple. We want to improve the you know the cost effectiveness of your app creation. So we somehow we done that right, but we can do more. And uh, we want to shorten the app to value cycle. Right? You create an app, and you want to actually 
you know, something help your organization to add value to your job. And uh, that's a real, our ultimate uh, goal. And uh, on the path, the few things really we can continue doing it. And uh, you can, you know, expect our uh, teams to create more widgets, uh, themes, or encourage you are doing that as well. And there's community doing that to uh, create widgets, share widgets. And uh, over time, we're going to give you some mechanism really you can share it uh, somewhere and do uh, uh, the better way actually to do that. And uh, there will be more solution oriented uh, widgets uh, developed by solution teams, some other teams uh, within Esri. And uh, maybe some, we we'll talked to some distributors, they want to actually contribute as well. There will be more 3D stuff, more data visualization. And uh, we want your apps to go everywhere, not just web app. And it could be a you know, mobile app, desktop app, and uh, native apps. All the apps related uh, will be something in, the, in this place. And I mentioned earlier app lifecycle management. We want to do more about the apps and online and offline. So just to give an idea where we're heading. And uh, there's a lot more we can do. There's a lot more, actually, you can uh, rely on our products and tools. Thank you. Okay, questions? Uh, questions? Hi. Hey. Yeah. Uh, the question is that uh, the, we, we have a lot more widgets in the 2D, but uh, only a few in the 3D, right? Yeah, over time, we, we can have uh, more, not just 3D, we have more widgets on the 4X, the new JavaScript API. That's including 3D and the 2D. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you want it, then you might have it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the question is: so Right now, we have a web app builder, we have App Studio, or some other tools to create apps. And Tabas just asks for hey, the idea is we have a one button. Say, hey, I want to create a native apps. You have native apps. You have a web app. You have a web apps. You don't have actually deal with different products, right? And my answer is, if you want it, we, we can have it sooner or later. Yeah, but it's a, uh, it's yeah, it's uh, it's evolving. All the tools and the products, and the products maybe become capabilities of online environment, right? Any other, Any other questions? All right. All right. Thank you. Let's call it a day. Thank you.